All right, guys, time to adjust the chain on this 2018 Bonneville T120. Now, we're about five years into this motorcycle's life, and she's only got lucky triple eight miles on the clock. Not even 900 miles yet. She has been serviced at least twice, though, and... The chain has never been adjusted and it's pretty loose. Let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, and as you can see, I've already removed the silencer. I'll get to that here in a second, but <laughs> yeah, I'd say she needs a bit of an adjustment. So let me walk you through the steps. It's actually really easy. There's nothing to it. I know some guys will say, ah, you gotta remove the silencers. It's a headache, it's a this or a that. It's nothing, this is, zen type work guys super easy super chill let me bring you into the mix okay guys stuff you're gonna need torque wrench 13 millimeter and a 12 millimeter for your adjusters something to measure your chain and to also measure the distance when you start to adjust it six millimeter hex a little picky guy you're going to be removing the passenger side foot peg don't lose your detent ball. Never see that thing again. And I've only got a Freedom Unit size socket that'll work. This is a 1 and 16th inch socket. I believe it's 27 millimeter, but fact check me on that. Here's your silencer, and I would recommend making sure that you grab yourself a towel just so you don't gack the finish on this thing when you're moving it around and removing it. All right, guys, so we're going to remove this passenger foot peg. Just take note of where your detent bracket, I guess is what you could call that, is located. You can hear the detent rocking around in there. You're going to notice underneath this little C-clip. I'm going to turn that around so you can get to it like this with your little picky guy. All right, that would have been impossible to do one-handed without slinging the C-clip all the way across the shop, but you get the idea. Just pick, boop, pop it right off, nothing to it. Okay guys, so grab your 12 millimeter and that nut right there is what you've got to remove, but the whole reason why you're removing the foot peg is so that you can get to that six millimeter hex that's holding it. So let's get this thing off of here and get that peg off of here. I recommend wrapping your hand all the way around this when you're removing it so that you don't end up with that detent ball bouncing and flying all over the place there you go there you go guys foot peg is off you just unscrew it taking a nut off a bolt uh, don't worry about how your passenger peg is going to go back on it also too has a detent which goes into that little hole there so just make sure that you clock it correctly you'll know that you've clocked it correctly because it will seat into that hole now just remove this right here, six millimeter hex, and uh, get your rag, make sure you wrap your rag around the exhaust on the backside, because you're gonna be wiggling and jiggling this thing after you loosen it, and you just don't wanna mar the finish on your silencer. Wiggling and jiggling, it comes right out. One thing I do wanna point out, fellas, is that the left side does have a secondary mounting point that the right side doesn't have. Let me show you that too. Yeah, it'll become pretty readily apparent when the can doesn't come off. You've got this other mounting position on the left can that the right can just doesn't have. It's just a 12 millimeter. Start turning it, it'll start to come off. No captured nut, but you get the idea. Nothing to it. Let's get to adjusting. All right, so we're just gonna loosen up the nut on the axle and Fun fact, uh, this one had been serviced apparently once before, and whoever serviced it I forgot to torque this thing. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's loose now, but I went to loosen this thing, and it just, whoop, like that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, anyway, 81 foot-pounds is what we're going to be bringing this bad boy back up to. That's the spec. All right, guys, start out by loosening your lock nut and just back it off just a little bit. Don't have to run it all the way back, just barely loose. All you're doing is taking tension off of your adjuster nut, or adjuster bolt, I should say. 
All right, guys, so to give you an idea where we're starting from, measuring the center of the chain at this 130 mark here, you've got 10, 20, 30, which is out of spec now, 40, and a little bit more. <laughs> That's why we're making this adjustment. So let's get started adjusting. What we're going to do, guys, is grab our 12 millimeter and evenly on both sides because you got to keep it very very even we're going to adjust out in quarter turn increments or thereabouts as close to it so let's do out come back over here and you'd be surprised how much it doesn't take oh. <laughs> I was hung up a little bit uh, to get this straightened out and to get the chain where it needs to be. Just a little bit of adjustment will go a long way. Okay, guys. Now, after just a couple of quarter turn adjustments, you've got 10, 20, right at 20 millimeters of adjustment which is the tight side of the specification. Now we're gonna turn the chain around a little bit, make sure there's no tight spots or loose spots. 10, 20, it's got a little bit there. Still within spec though. Looks good, let's start to get her buttoned up. I ended up giving it just a little bit more adjustment so that it was with or it was just the other side of 20 millimeters of free play or of slack, I should say, all the way around the chain. Measured it in several different spots, right at 20 all the way around now. All right, so next, I'm cool with that. I like to measure, this bike does not have any dashes, but even if it did, I still like to try to get measurements and what we're going to do is we're just going to make sure that the measurement is uniform in this gap here. So let me get that knocked out real quick. Kind of hard to do with one hand. Okay, guys. So in this particular instance, not that yours would be the same, but that's about 32 and a half millimeters. So we are going to go to the other side. Scoot over here and measure this. But in this case... Make sure that you flip your gauge so that you have the same parts resting like you had on the other side. Just adding a level of, you know, consistency. Okay, now that my obsessive compulsive disorder has been at least somewhat satisfied, <laughs> both sides are measuring this gap right here is about 33 millimeters. And I know what some of you guys are already saying, I can't believe you're using a dial indicator or whatever to, you know, micrometer to measure this kind of stuff. Well, yeah, I do because I, you know, I want it to be right. So that's how you do it right. So let's get this thing thumped back into place. <laughs> uh, just uh, force a habit. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and torque her back down. All right, guys, now just set your torque wrench to... 81 foot pounds, or uh, what is it, about 102, 103 newton meters? Does that work out about right? Get her all tightened down. Oh, there you go. And if it's about that time, now's a good opportunity to go ahead and lube your chain. From here, guys, it's just a matter of reversing the procedure. Get it all buttoned up and get out there and have some fun with this thing. One other thing I failed to mention earlier, you may find that you need to loosen up your heat shield. These little guys right here, those are, what was that, a five? Where does it say on here? Yeah, that's a five millimeter to loosen those up in case you need to move this thing around so that you can get your can either off or on. And again, these are sixes. So you need a six and a five hex. And there you go, guys. You have successfully tightened the chain 
and reassembled your Triumph Bonneville T120. Ah, like this bike a lot. Hey, one thing before I go. Yes, detents are working. There's no real sophisticated way to show you a, well, a less than clumsy way of installing this. One thing I will suggest as a top tip, get you a big towel and put it all underneath where you're working on this peg. And the reason why, if your detent ball drops and then hits concrete, it then becomes absolutely frantic and you never know where it's gonna go. And then you go to reach for it, you try to catch it, which basically means that you just pickleball the thing into non-existence. So uh, if you drop it, just watch it. Don't try to fetch it. You'll never succeed in that. You'll just end up smacking the thing across the shop. But the idea here, just to do this without as much headache as possible, is try to assemble your detent bracket, your detent ball into your peg and slide the whole thing in as an assembly, getting ready to stab it with your pen. That's the only way I can, uh, I can help to maybe get you a little bit easier experience with getting some of these pegs on without really losing your mind. But again, I didn't really need one for this, but it, I, I should have used it just as a precautionary measure. Big towel down here just to keep that detent ball. If it hits the ground, again, it goes flying. God only knows where it's going to go. Use your, um, use your brain <laughs> instead of your hands uh, to keep that little check ball in place. And with that, guys, that's a wrap. Y'all have a great one. Adios.